isn't often that you have the opportunity to walk into the offices of a law firm whose founding partner is considered by many to be the finest attorney in America and who at the same time is being referred to in the press as the billion dollar gentleman and then to meet him and find out he really is indeed just that, a true gentleman. As far as that billion dollar figure is concerned, it really should be billions because just this year alone, his law firm has won resolutions in court cases resulting in awards exceeding nine billion dollars. And in the process, this law firm, known far and wide as Girardi and Keese, has earned an enviable reputation as one of the finest in America when it comes to representing the little guy, the victim of negligence caused by corporate America. This is the firm that won the Viox case against a pharmaceutical company which was settled for $4.8 billion, as well as the case against the public utility here in California that ended up being told in the Academy Award-winning movie Aaron Brockovich. That case was eventually settled for $333 million. In both cases, this firm's founder, Tom Girardi, was the lead counsel. I wanted to be a lawyer all my life seven o'clock on Saturday night when I was in the sixth grade Perry Mason was on and Perry was just great man he knew how to win that case and I would watch that sixth grade seventh grade eighth grade. I said man that's what I want to do he was totally inspirational so then I went to uh, I went to law school out here went to Loyola uh, then I got a master's in law at NYU and came back and started the law offices of Tom Girardi. We had uh, two $500 cases and then some small ones and that was the whole repertoire. How has this firm handled the transition to where you have become really such a powerful force in this field of law? You know one step at a time but nobody leaves here. Everybody here, virtually everybody in the law firm, all 38 lawyers, were law clerks at this firm. For example, Bob Keyes, the firm is Girardi Keyes, was my law clerk. And so as a law clerk, you get to see these young people for a couple of years. And, you know, you get to measure how hard they work, their integrity, their process, etc. Then, once they're a member here, you know they're inspired. I mean, the cases we have are fairly inspirational. You know, I could say this, that when I started practicing, there was no moral aspect to the cases I had. The lady slipped and fell at Savon, you know. Savon didn't want her to get hurt, and it was just a mistake. Or some guy was going a little too quick and couldn't stop and ran into the back of somebody. And obviously, and those are the type of cases I had in the 60s. And there was nothing moral about the case at all. It was just a, somebody was negligent, and that was it. Now, if you look at almost every case here, there's a moral tone to it in that we have caught or attempting to catch uh, the bad guys harming the little guys and there there's tons of it. This firm is about a family of lawyers and support staff who tirelessly fight for the little guy and what I mean by that being able to get up every morning and help people who cannot call some big fancy lawyer and pay by the hour, but who truly are in need of legal help. They're in need of an advocate and a voice to protect them and to help them. And that's what we do. We work collaboratively with one another, sometimes independent of one another, to see that we can afford that opportunity for people. I like most of all the medical negligence cases. I was always very fascinated with medicine and by practicing medical negligence I'm able to meld two very strong interests of mine. I also do product liability whether it's any variety of products that are defectively designed and or manufactured and injure someone. I've also developed somewhat of a reputation for suing amusement parks for defective rides. And that's, that's sort of my general areas of expertise. Every single case we have here, we're against the best lawyers that uh, the, the United States has to offer. We're right involved now in, in the hot gas litigation. 
If you pull into a gas station and it's warmer than 62 degrees outside and you get 10 gallons of gas, you get 10 gallons, but you don't get 10 gallons of energy because the gas in the tank at Chevron or Shell or wherever you're buying it expands. As a matter of fact, if it's 85 degrees outside, you will get uh, 26 miles to the gallon instead of 30 miles to the gallon that you, you, you would normally get. When you buy the 10 gallons of gas, you pay state tax and federal tax on 10 gallons. When the oil companies, however, go to pay the state and they go to pay the feds, they say, you know, we didn't sell 10,000 gallons. We only sold 9,600 because we temperature adjusted. And they pay taxes on 9,600 and then they keep, they keep the rest of the money. There are 173 defendants and they all do the same thing. Now then, there's a little device you can put on the pump that gives you a full 10 gallons, no matter how hot it is. They refuse to use that, except in Canada, where it's real cold. Therefore, they can give you 9.7 gallons and charge you for 10 because the gas is compacted. I do a great deal of what could be called the pure legal work. I handle appeals. I work on legal motions in the trial court. And I also work on a lot of the more commercial disputes. Uh, patent disputes, copyright disputes, uh, consumer protection kinds of things. What this firm does is provide services and help to people who really have no other recourse, people who can't find other lawyers, can't get other lawyers, can't afford lawyers. And so it's a firm that represents people who need representation, can't get it anyplace else, and is really interested in the right and the wrong and what the moral issues are in the case as well as the harms that have been caused. Companies know we're out there, they know we can uh, win cases, they know we can impose damages on them, and so it changes, it prevents harm, the kinds of things that we do. Do you feel there's more satisfaction for an attorney working on this side of the law? Well, you know, people get satisfaction out of different things. There are a great many people who get satisfaction out of being great professionals, regardless of who they represent. And I understand that, and that can be very satisfying. You get up in the morning, you do a good job. But I think there's an additional satisfaction when you represent people whose lives otherwise would have been destroyed if you weren't there. You represent individuals who would have no other help if you didn't provide it. You represent something that you think represents justice for large groups of people instead of just individual advantage. There's an additional satisfaction to that beside the good feeling of just being a good lawyer and doing a good job. My main responsibility here is to get the proper experts so we can put on a, the proper case, do any settlement negotiations, and the trial of cases. I've been told by general counsel who represent corporate America that it means something if our name is on the pleading. They know that we're for real. And of course, that goes a long way to resolving cases too. If they think that you do have the ability to try the case, you have the financial ability to try the case, and you got the heart and the guts, you get a different offer on these things than you do on that same identical case without those four qualities. Best team doesn't always win the game, but the team that plays the best wins the game. You know, and that's what we have to do. We have to play the best on every single one of these cases. I think what separates more than anything is the absolute commitment. Uh, when we make a commitment uh, to handle a case, we handle it wherever it goes, whatever it costs, wherever it takes us. And those on the other side all know that. And it's not just the feeling for justice, it's not just the satisfaction. It really is the commitment to stick with the client and to see it through no matter what. Unique look inside the workings of one of the most remarkable and most successful plaintiffs' personal injury law firms in America today, Girardi and Keese. I'm Doug Llewellyn, reporting from Los Angeles. Well, that does it for this edition of Close Up on America's Business. I'm Janice Marie. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>